The stock market is often called unpredictable, a chaotic dance of supply and demand. Many say it's impossible to consistently beat the market. But what if I told you that with the power of artificial intelligence, we can build models that can learn from years of market data, identify subtle indicators, and make predictions with an accuracy that might just shock you. Get ready to challenge everything you thought you knew about trading. In this video, we will cover the following topics. Framing the problem statement. Processing data and feature engineering. Backtesting and model performance assessment. The first and foremost is understanding and framing the problem statement, especially for stock trading and machine learning. For me, the objective is very simple. I would like to trade one week ahead stock options, and thus, I would like to train a machine learning model to make one week time period ahead stock predictions. For the type of stock prediction, there are different ways to approach it. Some people might like to predict the actual stock price. Others might prefer to predict the direction, just up or down. For this video, I will be training a model to predict the stock price. Next, would be the choice of machine learning model. There are several different machine learning models for time series data such as Profit, LSTM, and XGBoost. For this case, I have selected XGBoost regression model, as it is easier to use for me personally. Now that we have our problem statement and clear on our objectives, we can proceed to code in Python. As always, we will first import the libraries which we use. The two important libraries, which we will be using are Y Finance from Yahoo Finance and XGBoost, which is the machine learning model of choice. Y Finance will provide the financial data from Yahoo Finance, which will power our model. We will load the dataset. For this notebook, we will select Netflix for the stock ticker that we will be making predictions on. We will pass the ticker, time period of data we need and time interval arguments into the download function. For this case, we will select data starting from the year 2023 till now, with a one-week interval. Once it is loaded, we can inspect the data. You can see that it is in the form of a pandas data frame. We have the date, close, open, high and low prices, and the volume traded. So now we have loaded the data. However, what we want to predict is actually the one time period ahead closing price. Thus, we will create a new target close column with the closing price shifted by negative one to get the one time period ahead closing price. Next, we will prepare the training data to train the model based on the existing features first. As the latest date's target closing price is not available, we will remove the last row from the training data. We will set up the XGB model with a fixed random state, fit and train the model based on the training data prepared earlier. The reason for doing this with the initial features available is so that after we train the model, we will be able to plot the feature importance and will then be able to do more targeted feature engineering based on trading indicators so that the final model trained will result in better predictions. Based on the feature importance plot, we can see that the closing price is the most important feature, followed by the traded volume. Just as an example, we will do some simple feature engineering. Since the closing price is the most important feature, we will try to create some features based on it. You will have to experiment with different features at this point in time and assess the performance of the model subsequently. For now though, we will create features based on different ratios of closing and opening prices to high and low prices, and the ratio of high to low price. We will also add in a simple moving average of 5 periods as well. We are now done with feature engineering. We will now retrain the model with the additional new features. Same as before, we will train on all the dates except the latest date and save it for the model prediction. One difference from before however, is that you may notice that I have deliberately excluded the first four rows from the training dataset. The reason is because with the inclusion of the five period simple moving average, there are no computed values for the first four rows and they are NAN. As there are no values, they are not helpful in training the model and might even skew the results. Hence, I have excluded them from model training. After retraining the model, we can review the feature importance plot to see how we may include additional features. 
Ideally, we should include as many features as possible such that there are no dominant feature importances. From the plot, we can see that the importance value for closing price has dropped and it is a step in the right direction. This process might have to be repeated several times and undergo many iterations to include additional features before the feature importance across the features are approximately the same values. Next, we can use the trained model to predict the latest row of data. Using the latest information, we will predict the one step ahead closing price. Let's print the date of the data used and the projected one week ahead closing price. With this, we can possibly use it to start trading. However, a good practice is to assess the model performance first. In this case, we can wait one week for the stock price to close and compare it against the model predicted price. However, this would be slow, tedious and inefficient. What we can do instead is to backtest it against the existing data set. It has the same concept of splitting by training and validation set, but with a slight difference. The first is that the data set is time series, which means that each data point affects the subsequent data points directly. This will mean that the validation data set, or the backtest, will have to be done on data in sequential order, which is usually the last few time periods. The second is that there is no feedback mechanism for the XG Boost model to incorporate new data points after the prediction is made. For example, say we have data for the month of January, and we have made a prediction for the closing price on the 3rd of January. With a one-week time period, if we want to continue to make another prediction on the 10th of January, the currently trained model does not have the updated information for the 3rd of January, and thus, will not be able to make an updated prediction for the stock price of the 10th of January. Thus, a feedback loop is necessary to constantly update the model of new data. To do that, I will create a loop within a predefined backtest time period range, such that the model will constantly be updated with the new information and be able to make better updated predictions. I have selected a backtest time period of one month or four weeks, and I will store the predicted values in a list and compare against the actual values to evaluate the performance. Since this is a regression model, I have decided to use three metrics to measure mean squared error, mean absolute error, and mean absolute percentage error. We can print the metrics along with the predicted results to visualize. From the metrics, we can see that using the features, the predictions are somewhat off and further improvement is necessary to make a more accurate prediction. Personally, I would prefer the mean absolute percentage error to be below 2% and ideally within 1%, but it depends on your risk tolerance and use case as well. In conclusion, we have trained a simple stock predictor. Through this, I have learned that feature engineering is key to the success of the model and it is important to spend time and effort on it. Through multiple iterations, hopefully the best features will be included in the model. Next, after building the features and training the model, it is also important to perform backtest and assess the model performance based on predefined metrics of your choice. It is subjective and will vary from person to person, but there must be a set threshold on model performance so that you can have some confidence in the model. All in all, I think this is a good base model for stock prediction and I will definitely be experimenting with different features and model combinations to stock trade. I will try to document my steps and who knows, if it turns out well, I might make another video on it. And that's the end. As always, I will be sharing the link to my notebook in the description section of the video. Hope you enjoyed it and if you have any thoughts, feel free to share them in the comment box down below. If you liked this video and would like to see more content of this nature, please be sure to like and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching and until next time.